Okay, so the video I'm about to show you was recorded last year. Now, this is with the P1000. It was just something that I was going through and was like, hey, bingo, this is exactly what I need to show at this moment in time because there seems to be a lot of chatter about um, fluid dynamics. And I'm trying to tell people that fluid dynamics has a huge effect on observations. And a lot of people, especially on the globe side, simply don't understand it or they just willfully ignore it. So I'm going to show you this video and we're going to be looking at the effect of just the tide. What effect does the tide have on the vertical height of the water? It's very simple. And you're going to see what happens as the tide pushes in in this location. So here we have Anchors Home. This is Anchors Home down here. We've got Cleaves up here. And obviously this is Anchors Home Slipway. So in the video that I'm going to show you, that's the ramp. That's Anchors Home Slipway. And this was give or take a few feet, my filming location, as you can see. Now, I will be looking over in this direction. We will be looking in the video. You will see the seawall as it comes through. This is the direction of the seawall. This is where it ends up. And the actual uh, location of uh, the filming, or where mo most of the filming actually takes place, is in this direction. So let's film here. So it's in this direction across to there. Okay, so I'm just going to save that there. So now you've seen roughly where all of this filming takes place. I'm now going to show you what happens when the water starts to pour in to this location. So in my location here, we have an incoming tide. So the incoming tide comes from the west to the east. So it will come in this direction from here, from this location, over here and up the estuary. That's what happens. So as an incoming tide, it comes this way. On an outgoing tide, it comes obviously back out the other way. Let's get rid of that. Uh, one last thing, let's show you a couple of these things. We've got Morecambe Bay over here. We have Haitian down here. We have Barrow Wind Furnace up there. And down here, we have obviously Rampside, Roosbeck and New Begin. Right, okay, so there's the location. So you're gonna view the tide pushing in. Let's have a look at a similar location, actually, whilst we're here, um, where Miles Davis films. now. His incoming tide, because it's on the opposite side in the UK, comes from east to west, so opposite to me. So the tide for him, when it's pushing in, comes from this direction over here, and it pushes up the estuary like so, and it meanders its way all the way up here as the tide pushes in. So you're going to see, as you can see with the topography of the land here, it's a very similar effect, almost identical, it's just on the other side of the, other side of the UK. So the tide will push in, up this estuary, and you're going to see the effect of what happens in my location down here. This is my location down here. A very similar estuary type to Miles Davis's estuary type. And you're going to see the effect of the tide that happens in my location. And I would ask you to obviously think critically and think to yourself, well, if this is what happens in this location, it would make perfect sense that as the tide comes in in this location, we get a very similar effect. Now then, just for some kind of clarity to some of the um, some of the locations here, down here, this is the the place where Miles Davis likes to film. This is the this is the target for him. This is Bass Rock, and obviously he's filming this location quite a lot. What's interesting is he also films at a at a time uh, when it's it's probably <laughs> ripe for these kind of things. My mistake. This is Bass Rock. So here we have Bass Rock. There's the lighthouse on this side here. But obviously these are the these are the three islands that he films across. And let me just show you how close that is to the inlet on this estuary. So here we go from there to there. Boom. Right across the estuary mouth and as the tide pushes in. So we're going to see a very similar thing over here when we come over this way. And we're going to see the same effect here as it pushes in through that estuary mouth. Right. Let's have a look at the video. are almost in the clouds and they feed a change to the ground with their chains of misery they've got a hold of me they won't let go of me let go of me they might have grabbed 
So not really that much to say to be honest, uh, I think the video speaks for itself, you can see the, uh, in this particular image you can actually see the uh, the tide pushing in, you can see the effect of the waves, you can see how they are ramped up. Now this is just the tide, this is just what happens as the tide pushes in. Now you can argue all you like um, about any other effects, I'm quite happy to talk about them if you want to talk about shoaling, if you want to talk about refraction, if you want to talk about swell, that's all well and good. This is just the tide moving in over this particular region, just the tide. The other effects compound all of these effects here, the vertical movement, the water, the fluid dynamics that's going on. Uh, you need to understand that in this, what you're seeing in this image here is the interaction between the seabed and the tide. So the water pushes in, the water interacts with the seabed, which slows the water at the bottom. That slowing of the water forces the water above it to clamber over it and rise up. And this is what you're seeing. You're seeing this, this friction between the seabed and the water and the effect it has obviously is it narrows into these narrow regions, shallower regions from the deep to the shallows. And this is just the effect that you see with the tides. Of course, other things can affect the water as well. Uh, this is just the tide. We've got swell. You've got shoaling. Now those things can also create this vertical movement of the water. Here you see in the vertical movement of the water just on the tide. That's it, just on the tide. When you start adding the other stuff into it, then you really start to understand what's going on with water. Now, I hope that's been useful for you guys, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. I enjoyed filming it, and let's hope I can get some more of these observations in the very near future so that we can examine them further.